Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for simonsystamp.com. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a card or a couple cards made using supplies included in the March 2020 card kit. I'm going to be using the Stronger Together stamp set as well as the watercolor pencils from Darius. Starting out with a bunch of stamping, I'm using the Barely Beige ink from Simus the Stamp to stamp this cluster of flowers and leaves from the stamp set onto some watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is Strathmore Cold Press 5x7 paper that's already pre-cut. And I actually ended up stamping it twice because there was one little section that I missed. While I have my Misty Stamp positioning tool out, I'm also stamping a little cluster of leaves using some Versafine Claire ink, a nice dark brown ink, onto some dark chocolate cardstock from Simon. I'm going to be doing some like white gouache painting on this brown cardstock so I thought having a brown ink would be a great way to hide the lines. I have a palette here from Art Impressions that I'm going to use to mix some different colors with this white gouache. First going to water down that gouache just a little bit so that it's easier to move with my paintbrush. And then I'm going to grab a couple different colors of the watercolor pencils and with a damp brush, I'm going to pull the color from the tip of the pencil and add it to the gouache. It's going to tint this white opaque paint just with just a little bit of that color. I'm mixing up two colors, I've got a nice pale green and also a pale yellow. I'm going to paint this directly onto my stamped leaves. And because this isn't a watercolor paper, I wanna make sure that my paints aren't too watery because this cardstock can't handle a ton of moisture. About this amount is just right. After I had my pale green shade on all of the leaves, I, added the, I then added the pale yellow. And this is just going to go on the tips of the leaves and there really wasn't much pigment from the watercolor pencil in, mixed into with this squash. So it started to look really, really pale. So I decided to go back in and add a little bit of a darker green shade to a third little color selection of gouache. And I ended up adding that to the bottom of the leaves. And this is really making that area very opaque. It's filling in any of those gaps so they don't see any of the cardstock coming through. I then grabbed a smaller paintbrush and used that same color that I was just applying and I painted on the stems for the leaves. Now it still wasn't looking green enough for me so I ended up taking a green watercolor pencil and picking up that color directly from the pencil and painting it over the top of the gouache that I have already applied. And just having that color down is enough of an opaque surface for this very transparent watercolor to go on top. Used my heat tool to speed along the drying process. And then I went directly onto the project with my watercolor pencils. Just add a little bit of shading with the green just out in the bottom of the leaves. And then I added some yellow right up at the top as well. So I pretty much have all of the leaves watercolored and colored in how I want them. So now I'm going to do a little bit of stamping to finish off this um, area for my card. I have the Miss You and Heart stamp from the stamp set, and I'm going to stamp it in Versamark ink directly next to those leaves. My idea is to have the greeting be in white on this very dark cardstock, so I'm going to use some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. So I'll sprinkle that on and then tap off the excess, and then I'm going to use my heat tool to heat set and melt this embossing powder until all of the powder granules are melted and smooth. So I have this card basically all stamped and colored. I'm not going to work on another card. So I stamped it earlier in barely beige ink and I'm going to do some no line watercoloring and colored pencils with the watercolor pencils. So for this particular image, I started out by coloring directly onto the cardstock and then using a damp paintbrush to spread out that color. I did one layer of a nice red shade and then I came in with a slightly deeper red shade. I used the same technique on the leaves by starting with a green shade, spreading it out with my uh, damp brush and then coming in with a darker shade. In this case, it was a brown color. 
So this is really going to tone those leaves, give them a little bit of a different look. And I decided to take that even further and add another color on top, this time going directly from the pencil itself. So I picked it up with my damp brush and put this kind of more bluish green shade at the, t at the very bottom of each leaf and then use a clean brush, just so a cleaning off my brush and then coming back with just water to spread that color out. I used that same smaller paintbrush that I used on the previous card to paint on the stems on this cluster of leaves and flowers. And I also varied the color as I painted these. Um, one is more of a greenish blue and the other is just straight green. So I wanted to add a little bit more shading on the flower petals just because I felt like they looked a little bit flat. So I mixed up a couple of colors, a purple and a red, and tried to get it just into a deeper shade. I also added some brown to it eventually. And then I painted that directly onto the petals. And that really added quite a bit more dim dimension and also definition to all of these flower petals. So that finishes all of the painting. So I'm going to now stamp the greeting. There's this fun kind of uh, ticker tape or label tape um, greeting that has four lines. And I thought that would look really cool stamped directly over the top of the side of these leaves. And I'm using that same dark brown ink that I used earlier. And I did end up stamping this about three times just because that watercolor paper does have quite a bit of texture. So after I stamped it three times, then it was ready to uh, move on for the assembly of the card. I'm going to die cut both of these cards uh, for that Miss You, I'm going to be using the Nested Circle die set from Simon. And I'm just picking out a nice circle shape and holding that in place with some washi tape. For the other card, I'm using the Waffle Flower A2 Layers dies. And I'm using one that's just slightly bigger than the whole watercolor and greeting area because I want to have quite a bit of my card base showing through. Speaking of card bases, here is some white cards that I'm going to use for the circle card. I've scored that at five and a half and then I placed a larger circle die and it's hanging off the edge of my folded piece by just a little bit. So it's um, coming off that fold so that after I run it through my die cutting machine, it does not cut up at that fold. I have a little hinge there for my circle card. The other card is made out of some Nina Desert Storm environmental cardstock, and that's a top folding card scored at five and a half. Put some foam tape behind my watercolor piece and adhered that directly to the card base. And I did that as well for the circle card, just putting some foam tape behind that brown watercolor piece. To finish off the circle card, I took a white jelly roll pen. This is a number 10 bold jelly roll pen and added some dash lines just around the outer edge to give it a more finished look. Those are the cards for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. You can check out the March 2020 card kit at the links down below and over at the simonsystamp.com shop. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in another video very, very soon.